I did not have sexual relations with that woman. America may have had a tough few decades of presidencies, but it was not always like this. There have been a total of 45 presidents since their independence from the British Empire. Let us start at the beginning and see for ourselves how we have got to this point. Excuse me, where's the lobby? Down the hall and grab him by the pussy. Thanks. Widely regarded as the father of the country, George Washington was the first ever president of the United States. A mastermind strategist, he is best known for leading the American forces in their war of independence. George Washington's vice president, John Adams, holds the distinction for being the first president ever to reside in the White House. Maybe what is even more astonishing is the fact that he never owned slaves, despite being a very powerful man. A great thinker and philosopher, John Adams was an early and lifelong abolitionist. Thomas Jefferson, on the other hand, owned a staggering 600 slaves during his lifetime. This was the same man who wrote the Declaration of Independence, which funnily states that all men are created equal. A nutty coincidence is that Thomas Jefferson and John Adams both died on the same day, their 50-year Declaration of Independence anniversary. James Madison was America's smallest president ever, standing at 5 feet 4 inches and weighing a whopping 45 kilograms. He was president during the War of 1812, where British forces captured Washington and burned the White House and the Capitol. It would be the last time a major U.S. city is ever captured by enemy forces. James Monroe is famous for his doctrine which forbids Europe from interfering in all American politics, including South American countries. The destined protectors of the two continents have mainly used the doctrine to further its own interests. It has been invoked to justify military interventions in Latin American countries, such as Panama, Cuba, and Venezuela. President John Quincy Adams was the first for many things. He was the first son of a U.S. president to be elected himself, the first U.S. president to be photographed, and he was also the first president to be inaugurated wearing trousers instead of knee breeches, setting a new fashion trend for the masses. Andrew Jackson was the first president to be elected from the Democratic Party. He was an avid duelist and participated in many thrilling duels throughout his life. Jackson is best known for the Indian Removal Act of 1830, which led to the forced migration and ethnic cleansing of many Native Americans. Martin Van Buren was the first president to be born after America's independence. He was known for his political skills and was often referred to as the Little Magician because of his ability to manipulate and organize political factions. When William Henry Harrison took office, he delivered quite possibly the longest inaugural address ever on record. This was despite the bitterly cold weather and the freezing rain. Shortly after his inauguration, William developed symptoms of pneumonia and died just 32 days after taking office, making his presidency the shortest ever in U.S. history. The presidency of John Tyler is held with very low esteem among historians. He clashed with his own party, the conservative Whigs, after becoming president. The party eventually expelled him, which caused many conflicts and strained relationships during his service. He did, however, father a staggering 15 children, which is to no surprise more than any other U.S. president in history. James K. Polk was a boring president. I mean to the point where he banned liquor from the White House and started working 12-hour shifts. He was straight-laced, somber, and humorless. He did, however, increase U.S. territory by provoking Mexico into a war and taking one-third of its land. Zachary Taylor was a general and a national hero. He served in the U.S. military for 40 years before becoming president. This did mean he had very little political experience and thus faced many challenges navigating politics. He served for only 16 months before dying from a stomach flu. Millard Fillmore demonstrated that through some competence, even an uninspiring man could make the American dream come true. That is exactly how the White House's official website describes Fillmore. To be honest, the only thing he is known for is marrying his school teacher who he fell in love with. At the age of 12, Franklin Pierce orchestrated a daring escape from his boarding school, embarking on a courageous 20-kilometer trek back to his parents. However, upon reaching home, his father forced him to walk right back in the middle of a thunderstorm. According to Franklin, that was a turning point for his childhood and future career. A bachelor for life, James Buchanan is the only president to have never married. 
He had previously been engaged to a woman named Ann Coleman, but soon after she called off the wedding over a fight involving other women Mr. James was seeing. She died later that year in what some have ruled as suicide. Historians have described the last few presidents as least memorable, but definitely not this man. His enduring legacy is primarily rooted in his monumental efforts to abolish slavery. Unfortunately, Lincoln's presidency was cut short when he became the first president to be assassinated. He was the first Republican president ever, and still remains the tallest president ever at six foot four inches. In 1867, Congress passed an act which prohibited the president from removing appointed officials. Despite the act, Johnson famously removed his Secretary of War the following year. And because of this, the House of Representatives voted to impeach him, making him the first president ever to be impeached. Ulysses S. Grant's most notable achievement was his determined efforts to suppress the Ku Klux Klan. In 1871, he signed the Enforcement Act an act which granted the federal government authority to declare martial law and prosecute involved criminals. Rutherford B. Hayes's election was intensely disputed, with Hayes, the Republican candidate, and Samuel J. Tilden, the Democratic candidate, both claiming victory. The situation led to the Compromise of 1877, in which Hayes was declared the winner, but in exchange for concessions to the Democrats. James A. Garfield was the second U.S. president to be assassinated. While preparing to board a train in Washington, D.C., Garfield was shot twice by a disgruntled office seeker who believed that the president owed him a government position. Garfield's injuries proved fatal, but it was not the gunshot wounds that caused his death. Rather, it was the medical treatment he received, which was inadequate and unhygienic. Chester A. Arthur was known for his keen fashion sense. He took great care in his appearance and was often praised for his impeccable suits. He had a personal valet and owned more than a hundred pairs of pants. Not a lot by today's standards, but it was quite the extravagance back then. Grover Cleveland, or Big Steve, was overweight and weighed a massive 275 pounds. He was heavily addicted to smoking cigars and drinking far too much beer. Benjamin was the grandson of the ninth president, William Henry Harrison, making them the only grandfather-grandson duo. Benjamin was the first president to have electricity in the White House. He was so nervous about the new invention that he hired a specific servant to turn on the lights. Big Steve makes a return. He is the only U.S. president to serve two non-consecutive terms in office. William McKinley was the third president to be assassinated. He was killed by an anarchist while attending an exhibition in New York City. The shooter had wrapped a handkerchief around his right hand to conceal the weapon and approached the president for a handshake. When McKinley extended his hand, the man fired two shots, killing the president. The shooter was annoyed with McKinley's capitalist policies, which he believed favored the elite over the working class. With the assassination of President William McKinley, Theodore Roosevelt took his place and became the youngest president in the nation's history at age 42. Just like his predecessor, he too was shot while delivering a speech, but fortunately survived. The only president bigger than Big Steve himself was President William Howard Taft, who weighed in at a whopping 330 pounds. Taft was also the first to upgrade the White House fleet from horse-drawn carriages to motor vehicles, a sigh of relief for the poor horses. Woodrow Wilson was the only U.S. president to have held a Ph.D. He is best known for his crucial role in the negotiations which ended World War I. He proposed his famous 14 points, a set of principles for post-war peace, including the establishment of the League of Nations. A controversial president, Warren G. Harding is truly only remembered for sneakily appointing his friends into official positions which they unfortunately used for their own enrichment. Coolidge was popular for, well, doing nothing. He's quoted as saying that he spent much of his presidency avoiding the big problems. Known for his quiet personality, he was given the nickname Silent Cal. Herbert and his wife both spoke Chinese. They frequently spoke Chinese whenever they wanted a private conversation in the White House. Herbert was also very, very rich, amassing more than $100 million over his full career as a mining engineer and expert. 
FDR has the record for serving the longest of any U.S. president, having served four terms. He was elected in 1932, 1936, 1940, and 1944. He led America during most of World War II from a wheelchair. He was paralyzed from the waist down after contracting polio. Harry S. Truman is best known for authorizing the use of nuclear weapons for the first and last time ever in history. On the 6th of August, 1945, Truman authorized its use on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Eisenhower was the first president to ride in a helicopter. He loved it so much, he asked the Secret Service to replace limousines for short trips to and from the White House. NASA was also established during his presidency, and he approved the first U.S. space mission in 1955. John F. Kennedy was the last U.S. president to be assassinated. He was traveling in an open convertible with his wife when three mysterious shots were fired at him. One of them struck him in his neck, while the other in the head, killing him instantly. Johnson is best remembered for continuing the war in Vietnam by sending an additional half a million troops during his presidency. The result was the death of 60,000 U.S. soldiers and up to a million Vietnamese people. Richard Nixon, a Republican president, became infamous for his involvement in the Watergate scandal. He orchestrated illegal spying on Democrats, including a break-in at their offices and secret recording of conversations in his own office. He was ultimately caught and forced to resign. An interesting fact about Ford is that he was the target of two assassination attempts, both in 1975, both in California, and both by women. He was the only person in U.S. history to become vice president and president without being elected to either position. Carter's presidency was marked by escalating economic problems. Inflation and unemployment rose dramatically while gas prices skyrocketed. It got so bad, at one point people started lining up for hours just to get gas for their cars. Ronald Reagan was a Hollywood actor before he ever became a politician. He appeared in a total of 53 movies over a 30-year career as an actor. He was also very famous for decreasing taxes for high-income individuals. George Bush was a man of many, many achievements. Besides his presidency, he was one of the youngest pilots ever in the U.S. Navy. He also ran a very successful oil business. He was an ambassador to the United Nations and even the director of the CIA at one point. <laughs> Bill? I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Did you know he was talking about his wife in that video? The younger Bush is known for two things, Afghanistan and Iraq. Historians say his legacy is still being determined, but the masses say he exploited both nations for U.S. self-interest. What do you think? The first African-American president of the United States, Obama is best known for killing bin Laden and dumping him in the ocean. He is also remembered for his charismatic speeches. Donald Trump is known for far too many things, but what stands out the most to us is his knowledge of the financial system. He might have the record for the most bankruptcies and unpaid debts in U.S. history. Joe Biden? Well, he loves chocolate chip ice cream, that is for sure. 